So you got your, your deep super where they live, shallow super for honey that I can extract later on in the year. You've got an inside cover, which is ventilated. It goes on right like that. And then you've got an outside cover. The reason for the inside and outside cover is, once again, bees glue everything together. This red stuff you see here is called propolis. Uh, two words. It's Greek for uh, in front of the city. Uh, pro is in front and polis is met like metropolitan. Each one of these is called a frame and each piece of this yellow stuff is called foundation. That's what the beekeepers give to the bees so that they, uh, so that they build their comb straight. If they don't build their comb straight, it's a real hassle to try to get the honey out of the comb. So, uh, so beekeepers give the bees this frame, this, this uh, frame with the beeswax inside. And this is how we give it to them. It's very thin, very light, there's almost nothing to it. Once the bees have had it for a while, they do what's called draw it out. Um, bees produce beeswax. It's a byproduct of the digestion of honey. And it comes out from the plates, in between the plates on the sides of their bodies. And uh, what they do is they soften it up by chewing on it a little bit. And then they make this smooth stuff, very smooth, into honey cells like that. This is all, this is all drawn out, except on the very edge here. And this is all drawn out and filled full of honey and then capped over on top. That's, that's perfectly good honey right there. Probably delicious honey right there. They build a pattern. When they do it, they build a pattern. It's kind of a, uh, a spherical thing. The, uh, here's one that's really full. That weighs about three pounds. That's three pounds of honey right in there. What a beekeeper does is take what's called an uncapping knife, and they take this. There's a midrib down the center, as, as was illustrated by that. That's the midrib. Um, there's, there are cells on either side. And what a beekeeper does when he wants to harvest this honey is to take a heated, doubled uncapping knife and scrape off the very tops of these cells. And then uh, each one of these frames goes into a big centrifuge. And the honey is centrifugally uh, forced out. So, let's see what else we got here. When they build their pattern, what they do is the surplus honey is on the very outside because it doesn't have to be kept warm. As far as the inside is concerned, the very center is what's called the brood chamber, and it's spherical, so it's it's bigger on the on the uh, frames in the middle, and it gets smaller as it goes out. Now, what we've got here is all this is capped honey, beautiful. It weighs about four pounds or so. Same thing on this side, but on this side, what we start to see is the brood pattern. In other words, now once again, this is the box where the bees live, and on the outside they keep the honey. So that's all. This is all honey on the outside. Right in the middle here, though, is where the queen lays the eggs and the baby bees are raised. That's why they're empty. The brown is what's called pollen stain. They walk across uh, the stuff with pollen on their feet, and that's what kind of stains it a little bit. It takes about 10 pounds of either honey or sugar water to produce one pound of beeswax. And that is a brand new colony, so they are trying to draw out the, front, the, uh, the foundation. I gave them foundation like this mm -hmm. and what they have to do over the next couple of weeks is to thicken it up to draw it out so that they can put honey in it or baby bees in it. If bees are given two things that are too far apart they will glue them together. If they're given two things that are too close together they will glue them together. <laughs> but if you do it exactly right there's this measurement called bee space which is three-eighths of an inch. They won't glue it together. That's the whole principle about why these things have that little space in between each one. Right. That's why. That's bee space. And that's the anatomy of a beehive. They're all the same. A guy named uh, Langstroth invented these in 1856, I think. And in, uh, whatever, a hundred and how many years, nobody has been able to improve on it.